In this problem we're told that a football is kicked and leaves the ground at an angle of 38 degrees above the horizontal. So that's 38 degrees and moving at 20 meters per second. So that's the initial velocity. How far horizontally does the football travel? So the football is moving in this parabolic path if we neglect air resistance. And neglecting air resistance isn't isn't completely realistic in this problem. Footballs typically are kicked at a high enough speed that the air resistance is significant. But as I said before, calculating the air resistance is a pretty complicated thing and typically well beyond a high school physics course. So we're going to uh, do this with the ideal, the idealized assumption of no air resistance and figure out how far it goes horizontally. Now the key thing to solving any projectile problem is to do the horizontal and vertical independently. So let's find the horizontal and vertical components of V0. We'll find V0x and V0y. And V0x is the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. And V0y is the initial velocity times the sine of the angle. And make sure your calculator is in degree mode and type those in. 20 times cosine of 38 comes out to 15.8 meters per second. That's V0x here. And 20 times the sine of 38 comes out to 12.3 meters per second. That's V0y right here. Now here's my approach. We, I'm going to do the vertical first. We, we do vertical and horizontal separately. And vertically, I'm going to use this initial vertical velocity to figure out how much time it spins in the air. And then I'll do the horizontal motion and see how far over it goes during that time. So vertical first here. And there's a couple of different ways you could do this. Uh, I'll show you one way that I think is pretty interesting. Let's write down our given information here first. Initial velocity vertically is 12.3. We use the vertical component, not the given 20 meters per second. We're only dealing with vertical motion here, so we use the vertical component. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, when I decided that this number was a positive 12.3, the vector going up, then that is equivalent to saying that up, or that, that is implying that up is my positive direction. So the acceleration here has to be negative. And then I know my initial height is zero, and I know my final height is zero. It starts off over here and ends up over here, a height of zero in both cases. So I'll use this equation. Let me get a little more room here. I'm going to say y is y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And both of those are zero. So I can write zero is zero plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. Now I'm trying to find t. I'm going to take this term and move it over to that side and it becomes negative. So I get negative v0t equals 1 half at squared. And then I'll divide each side by t. I can simplify here. And on the left, the t's cancel out. And so I'm left with negative v0 equals one half a t. And now I need to solve this for t. If I multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by a, t, hang on, little mistake here, that should not be a t squared because this squared canceled right there, so that should just be a t. And so now, uh, if I divide, if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll go ahead and write it out. Multiply this side by 2 and multiply this side by 2. And the 2's cancel. And divide both sides by A. And on the right, the A's cancel. 
I'm just left with t by itself on the right, and it equals this. So a little more room here. t is equal to negative 2 v0 over a. And I know these numbers. I know my v0 and my a. So let's write negative 2 times 12.3 meters per second divided by a, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now my negative signs will cancel out, my meters will cancel out, one of my seconds will cancel out, and as always, if you set the problem up carefully, the positive and negative signs and the units should work out. And this works out to 2.51 seconds. And notice we put in the initial height of zero and the final height of zero. This was the height at the beginning, and this was the height at the end, and when we do all this math here and solve for t, we get the time from the beginning to the end. So that's the total time of the flight. Now we want to know how far horizontally it goes during that time. So now let's set up the horizontal part. And this will be quick and easy. Okay, horizontally there's no acceleration. And the initial velocity horizontally we found is 15.8 meters per second. And that initial velocity is the velocity the entire time. It doesn't change because there's no acceleration. And we know the time because we just found that time is 2.51 seconds. So I'm just going to go straight to this equation. X is VT. Uh, again, I could write out all of this. I could write out X is X0 plus V0T plus one-half AT squared but recognizing that the initial position is zero and the acceleration is zero just leaves me with this distance is velocity times time so I'm gonna just skip all of that and go straight to this equation x equals VT and put in the numbers 15.8 meters per second times 2.51 seconds the seconds cancel and I get 40 meters.